I thoroughly enjoyed this chat with Ian Cooper. Having worked with Ian over 16 years ago, uh, we've got a lot of history and we've worked together uh, helping accountants and bookkeepers. We're both still doing the same thing in different companies and we have a little chat today about what to expect when you go to an event. We also spent the whole day traveling up to Manchester and had a good old chat there as well. But obviously you don't know about that because that was after the show. But we also talked about why Ian chose his song this week, which is Sit Down by James. So without any further ado, here is Ian's chat with me. Hello, Ian. Very first question I always ask my guests. Why did you choose that song? Oh, that was, hey, Ashley, uh, that was chosen uh, for multiple different levels. So... uh, First of all, we are going to Accountex, and Accountex is going to be busy, 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 and I'm going to want to sit down. Second, going to meet loads of people, and I want to sit down and chat with them and talk to them. And then third and final, we've got a road trip coming up, Ashley, in about an hour's time, and I'm going to be sitting down next to you. So, um, yeah, there you go. Triple level. <laughs> you really thought about this one, haven't you? Five hours in a car with me. How nervous are you? Uh, <laughs> I said I've got my notebook ready so I can take some notes. I'm going to be picking your brains. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to be picking yours too. So, um, Accountex. Oh, no, first of all, first of all, Ian Cooper, tell everybody who doesn't know who you are because you're, you're normally, um, you've, you've been on my show that I do on a Wednesday, which is for Accountants and Bookkeepers, but this is my Tuesday show, although it's a Monday. Um, and we're just, just chatting to people, finding out what you do on LinkedIn. So let everybody know who you are, what you do. Yeah, thank you, Ash. Um, so, Ian Cooper run a the UK division for a company that saves accountants time and um, increases the efficiency in the firm, decreases risk, head up a small team, really well formed, beautiful team, loving it. Uh, dad of two, two boys, um, one hit 10 yesterday and the other hit 13 on the 6th of September. To cop all that, top off that Emma uh, birthday is today. So it's uh, five, five direct family members in September um, but the three in the household have now today finished the, the birthday little trilogy of birthdays. Wow. Wow. Well, congratulations. Um, so um, I used to work with Ian um, a long time ago, wasn't it? 16 years ago, I first started, give or take a, a week or so. Uh, it was September 2007. I came and joined you at uh, Digita. And I can remember when you didn't have any children and now you've, you're a father of, teen, of a teenager. How's that going? I've got a few more grey hairs than I had when I met you first time, but um, kids are brilliant um, and really frustrating in <laughs> possibly equal measures. But no, they're fantastic. They're both really right. into sport. One plays uh, one plays football for Exeter City Academy, so he gets a lot of opportunity wow. to sit down on coaches and travel all around playing some really huge teams. And it's been great watching him. But um, and it brings a it brings a level of focus for him to do his kit bag, make his bed, make sure he helps out around the home. So it's really good in learning life lessons. And then the 10 year old, I'm a coach for his football team um, down in Exmouth uh, called Brixington Blues. We, um, it, so that's really rewarding being able to give back to some of the other kids that, that the coaches of my eldest gave to him a few years ago. So yeah, giving back a bit more. No, fantastic. And, and that's that's the thing, isn't it? It's a quite quite a poignant um, time at the moment for parents because um, they're, they're dropping them off. They're dropping them off at university. And, uh, you know, there's empty nest syndrome and, and all of that sort of malarkey going on. And uh, I really feel for those parents that, that are that are feeling that at the moment. It will pass. I promise you it will pass. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's another stage of life, isn't it? Ian? Of course. Yeah. Well, you've been through the, through the mm. university years, haven't you? So, yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and the weddings. <laughs> Oh, that looked amazing. That, yeah, no, it was, that it was earlier on this year. Looked yeah, amazing. Absolutely. So, um, Ian, tell us, what is it you do on LinkedIn? Why do you like LinkedIn? LinkedIn, I, I've sort of, I've been on LinkedIn for years and years and years and years. Um, and uh, when I was wearing a different hat, definitely on the sales side of things, um, and before people really knew how to use LinkedIn, um, I, I wasn't getting the most out of it. It was used as a method for contacting people out of the blue um, uh, and not really understanding what the platform's for but the last few years and especially since joining FYI the my use of F, uh, of LinkedIn has become more and more um, kind of eclectic it, it, it there's a nice equal mix or a relatively good blend of social 
So I'm quite happy talking about the children, what I've done this weekend, um, silly mistakes I've made, um, but also talk sharing about our company. Um, and then the third sort of aspect of this is contributing to our people um, and actually interacting with them. But, and that's where I think the most fun comes from, the, the thread that seem to go on and on and on, because you comment and they comment back and then other people get involved in that thread and it sort of um, it, it expands from there. So, yeah, quite a heavy user of social, uh, social media, especially LinkedIn. Um, and I actually was, did your course um, just about a year and a, a year and a half ago. Wow. Uh, and since then have been monitoring the metrics. So 100 um, percent increase in uh, number of connections. My post impressions have gone through the roof um, relative to what they were 18 months ago. So, um, yeah, good user, like the statistics, like the stats, uh, always learning and um, uh, and just experimenting a little bit. But fantastic platform. Yeah, no, I, I'm just thinking back to our days when we were at Digita together. Um, we'd go and make a cup of coffee at the coffee machine and we'd have a little natter there or we'd chat across the desk or something or someone bring a cake in and we'd have a natter. You don't have that when you're either working from home or you're running your own small business from your shed. And so LinkedIn is that equivalent, don't you think? Yes, I do. Yeah, absolutely. There's people that I'll be meeting um, tomorrow who I've never met in real life, but mm. feel like I sort of had those coffees, had those conversations, um, know about their children, know about their family, know about their aspirations and what they where they went on holiday. So instantly when you do meet people that you've connected with, uh, and you follow their story a little bit. You've got this connection with them, um, and it, it. Sometimes I sit back and I sort of look at how we're having a conversation about their holiday, and yeah, I know they've been on a holiday. I know where they've been, and then the conversation just flows a little yeah. bit easier, I think, because yeah, of course, of course it's that it. base level of understanding that you're not having to start from from square one when you have that when you have that sort of catch up. Yeah, absolutely. I used to fear going to networking uh, events, you know, like Accountex and, and, and other such places because you didn't know anyone and what people are going to say. And now, like you say, it's like, oh, that's Ian. I, I know about I know about his kids playing football. And, you know, and I, I know that, no, that's Ashley. He plays guitar and, and all that sort of malarkey. And it just it just breaks down a couple of barriers and makes it a lot easier to connect, doesn't it? So you, you, yeah. mentioned, you mentioned other social media. What um, what other social media do you use? Uh just on the um, just on the social barriers, just before we go there. So I'm um, I'm sort of I didn't realise, but I'm notorious for taking videos whilst walking in beautiful places all around the East Devon. So whether it's down on Exmouth Beach, or I've gone for a run up at Woodbury, or I've walked along the River X, um, I'll just grab the phone because I get uh, and take a video because I get quite a bit of inspiration from being able to just do that dog walk um, and have a think about what's what I'm really interested in at the moment. And um, the amount of people that come up and go, oh, that this scenery where you live is just beautiful. And um, and instantly that barrier, like we just said, has just been broken down. So, Yeah, we, I'll tell you what, we are pretty lucky living where we live. I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm moaning about a long trip in the car, but it's great to get back, isn't it? It's, it's just, we're so lucky here. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And sorry, I forgot your second question. It was uh, other social media, Ian. Um, oh, it's, you know, it's just in interesting to hear what other people are using as well. You know, do you do TikTok videos and dance? I do TikTok. I use CapCut for um, CapCut CapCut for recording my videos, editing the videos. Um, don't really post onto TikTok. Uh, I use X. Although this weekend, prime example of why I love LinkedIn versus other social media platforms. The big furore with all of the news that was coming out um, about Russell Brand and. Um, you could see these polarized decisions jump to on X, and it was like formerly known as Twitter. Um, what they <laughs> rebranded, just in case, just to sort of realign that. Um, and there was these polarized views, and suddenly it's just head on head. And then you come onto LinkedIn, and people are talking about these lovely stories about this, um, just sort of lovely weekend stories about what they've been doing and things like that. Far more um, level, and normal in terms of. Uh, conversation now i don't think um don't i think obviously conversations need to be had but there's uh there's a massive glaring difference between the two platforms so yeah absolutely i've not seen anything about russell brand on linkedin yet um but yeah and, and i don't i don't i i've got uh x but i don't i don't go on it 
no no it's, it's, I, it's, I can imagine i can absolutely yeah. imagine i can imagine all the conversations that are going on there so um tell us a little bit about fyi uh for your information i guess that stands for fyi that's right yeah um australian company launched in 2018 growing very very quickly we do um, practice management document management process automation so it's uh it's tools that relieve the boredom of doing the same repetitive back office tasks that accountants usually have to do which means that firms have more time to spend with their clients so really we're just uh, we're oiling those back office processes uh, right away across sort of like the vertical of the the firm so we have um we save accountancy firms time so they can spend more time adding value to their clients um and also with the difficulty that some firms find recruiting at the moment because it it's expensive to to recruit uh, it's hard to recruit talented people so by automating as much as possible um within the firm we sort of relieves a little bit of that pressure of um recruiting people in the firm so heading up the uk team um, some fantastic individuals. It's been really interesting. I've previously been a product manager, so I've sort of been responsible for products, which is great. Um, but now I'm responsible for people as well, which is also fantastic because I've been around a few years, as you kindly highlighted earlier. I think uh, it started 20 odd years ago. Now, that's quite a lot of time to build experience about practice efficiency, practice management, document management. Uh, and now it's time to pass on some little bits of little nuggets of wisdom that i've picked up along the way no fantastic so um you you say say that the, the business is relatively new and um you're you were employee number one in the uk so you're actually building a, a business from scratch uh in the uk is that right uh employee number two uh, okay. jacob Varner. he was our first man he was the og the fyi og of uh in the uk uh a kiwi that um was in practice for a firm called nexia so it started as a chartered accountant as the employee number one i joined july 2022 and now we're up to five and looking for at least a couple more people as well so yeah the, the growth here is phenomenal um the support we get from our um, the, the founding, the founder, CTO and CEO who are both in Australia, the support we get from them is phenomenal. Um, they really put their money where their mouth is in terms of regional specific development that we need. So the um, which is uh, exactly what you want, but enough freedom to, to sort of um, and enough freedom to be able to do what we need to do to um, sort of crack the UK market like they've done in Australia. So. Last year, FYI doubled in size and to 20,000 users and well, 17,000 users. And we're going to look to double in size again this year. Um, the beautiful part of that is 100% growth year on year without increasing staff more than uh, sort of 20 or 30% is, uh, is really difficult to do. So the scaling pains. But we run our whole business on FYI itself. So we automate everything. And being... Using your own product to solve salute, solve problems gives you this level of um, insight when you're talking about going and solving other people's problems that previously I've not had in, in other companies. Um, so that that's really refreshing change. The, the, the team really make the product work for us. We'll be using features for months before they go out to general release sometimes um, just to make sure they work in the way they're meant to and solve the problems they're meant to. So. Yeah, very no, exciting. No, I think that's a great thing. You, you're eating your own dog food, as they say, isn't that right? I yes, I've been brought up on eating. No, I haven't been brought up on eating my own dog food, but I've been brought up using the expression "eating my own dog food." But our CRO, um, a chap called Ned's like, no, drinking your own champagne here. So, uh, oh, yeah. I love that. Yes, eating I... your own champagne. Absolutely love that. That's better. It's all. It's all a mindset. A mindset shift, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we're going up to a Kentex um, and you're exhibiting. And so um, not specifically a Kentex, but talk about the sort of things that if we're going to exhibit at a conference uh, or, or, or some sort of exhibition, what sort of things should we be thinking of? I think there's um, what do you what are you going there for? It's obviously expensive to leave the office for a day. You've got direct costs of actually transport, maybe accommodation. Uh, you've got the opportunity cost, so you're out of the office. So know that you're know what you need to get out of it. And I think that um, you need to know where the 
pains are in your business. And that might take some time to step outside the business, which again is expensive in the short term, but can pay itself back sort of 10x long term by understanding where the pains are in your business. So once you understand where those pains are, make sure you review all of the content that's delivered, that's going to be delivered. I went to a conference last year, actually this conference, but as a, a delegate rather than as an exhibitor. And I had the most fantastic time. I took a pen and paper, old school, and went round, sat in on pretty, on pretty much back to back, sitting down, listening to all of these industry experts sharing their stories about um, different areas that they're specialists in, um, that they've got knowledge in, they've got experience in. They've then taken the time to consolidate those thoughts into a presentation and then deliver them to you. Uh, I mean, how valuable is that? It's incredible. Um, so I possibly packed, I possibly had too much content scheduled out before I went there. Um, so there's a potentially leave a little bit of a gap, leave a little bit of spare space, a bit of capacity um, for, to do something random because you're also going to be meeting exhibitors. They've got some of them will have solutions to problems that you know you've got, and some of them will have solutions to problems you don't know you've got. Um, and the time it would take to review, let's say, five or ten pieces of software and do it justice. Uh, would go into weeks and then make decisions. So whilst you're there, after the content of the great speakers, if they're talking about things that you know you want to resolve, you go and see those. Then go in there to talk to the exhibitors, the ones that you're interested in or the ones that provide solutions to something that you think you've got an area where it can help. Um, and you'll find that building that relationship and the number of relationships you can build quickly at these events is a phenomenal, phenomenally good return uh, in terms of uh, building those connections and having somebody to speak to at the companies because so much is done online nowadays that it's really quite hard to get a, a sort of the face-to-face -face interactions that you need to really get the buzz and get the excitement and get the get the nuanced answers to your questions we've been dealing with companies where it's a, a tick sheet um, do you do this yes 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 but a tick sheet of features when you're reviewing software, it doesn't really get to the bottom of what you want because you've got the company that you're talking to really needs to understand you and what better way of doing that than in person at one of these events in 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah, no, absolutely superb. And, and the other thing you're also going to find out is other solutions that your clients might need. So you might go and chat to somebody or see something. And, oh, my goodness, that's brilliant. I know somebody else that would use that. It's not necessarily you. So it's handy to build up those referrals as well. Um, we're both pushed for time. Um, it's it's nearly half past 12. So uh, I've got one more question for you, Ian. And that is what advice would you give your 16 year old self? So probably something you'll be uh, talking to your boys uh, in the near future. But what advice would you give your 16 year old self? It, it is getting really close to my boys being 16, which is really scary. Um, and I have been thinking about this a lot. Now, I think um, one of the books that uh, I, I hit 16, didn't know what I wanted to do, went to college, standard, and, and then still didn't know what I wanted to do, didn't go to university, not so standard, uh, and moved into technology. And um, Now, the book I wish I'd read when I was 16, and it was a, there's a series of probably three books, I'd say, um, there's a book from written in like 1928, I think it is, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Dale How Carnegie. With, yeah, the, yeah, Dale Carnegie. Uh, How to Get On With People in the Real World. Um, and that's and so much of that book is focused on empathy uh, and being able to try and just put yourself in somebody else's perspective. Because without understanding that somebody else's point of view or got a valid point of view, it becomes really hard to... To build those close relationships so um how to win friends and influence people definitely that one uh the four hour work week by brian and um, by tim ferris tim ferris runs his podcast it he's written loads of books i think he wrote the four hour body to begin with but the four hour work week is about working smarter just getting rid of stuff that doesn't actually create value um, in your life or for customers uh, and being able to really focus on the working in the areas that you need to work on to get the best results. Um, and that I thought was fantastic. And I think if any kids read that um, at the 16, and it's a great time for them to be reading it, 
um, then I would say read that book. Instead of all of the weird sci-fi fantasy novels that I was reading or um, going back to the historic, the Vikings invading, and, which is really interesting. But, um, but potentially if I'd mixed up the, uh, the, the fantasy saga with, uh, with the occasional self-help book, then uh, the um, sooner in life, then uh, I might not have been having to take, tackle an MBA in my late 30s or early 40s. But you did an MBA and that's the thing. Ian, that, that, they're great suggestions. I think that's really brilliant. I think that's the first time anyone's ever said I'd have read a book when I was 16. I think that's, I think that's a great a great advice. And uh, maybe on our road trip, we can talk about some of the books that we should both be reading. Um, Ian, you've been a lovely guest today. Um, get, get a shifty on and I'll, I'll meet yep. you in Tiverton and we'll be yes. at Kentex tomorrow. Thank you very much, Ian. And thank you to awesome. everybody for listening. Cheerio. Thank you very much. Here we go. Another podcast in the bag. I've been Ashley Leeds. You've been wonderful. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to hear more, then please subscribe and I will see you again another day. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want to catch up. If you fancy being a guest on one of my shows, I do live shows on LinkedIn twice a week, but I also plan to do some real podcasts uh, where we just do audio and probably record it to go on the YouTube channel. And we can talk about absolutely anything in those. So whatever you want to do, get in touch. And thank you for listening.